Yeah, so hello and welcome students. So uh, today is the six lectures of the course MA 412 linear algebra. Okay, so this is lecture number um, six. Now recall uh, in our last lecture, uh, what we learn? We learn something called rank nullity theorem. Rank nullity theorem. Some people call rank nullity dimension theorem. So let me write down that also. Uh, rank nullity dimension theorem. And what of the theorem that if you have a linear map uh, from a finite dimension vector space V over F to another vector space W over F, so this dimension of V is finite, okay, then rank of T, uh, if this then rank of uh, f plus nullity of f that will be equal to dimension of v okay and the proof was uh, to start with the, uh, the null space of the kernel and the basis and then extend it to the basis of v and then it's whether the rest whatever they are in the basis of V is not inside the basis of the kernel that the elements in which are actually forming a basis of the uh, range so that equals to the rank of the dimension of the range okay this was the proof actually but yeah so, so one thing of this we can ask for uh, uh, many examples so uh, how, how to find out null space, rank space, everything can we can give example. Okay, so let us start with a few examples. Okay, now what are the known maps? Um, now you, you know that, um, um, yeah, so, so given any vector space, we in any vector space V, and uh, we know that okay, so identity, let us start with identity, linear map, okay, so send every element to x, y for all x belongs to V. Now, uh, this linear map we can easily check that um, the null space or uh, the, the that uh, kernel. How the kernel look like? The kernel of F is actually single pen. Okay. Only zero maps to zero, right? And um, and hence of this linearity, uh, linearity is zero. Okay, so kernel of F zero means it's zero dimensional subspace, right? It's not a one dimensional. Okay. So null it is zero, and then uh, obviously uh, this is one two also, and the range of um, range of i, which is actually equal to v, okay, and hence uh, um, your rank of I is actually equal to dimension of V and hence it is satisfying the formula uh, that rank of I plus nullity of I is actually dimension of V because this is zero right this portion is zero okay so satisfying the formula. Okay, this is simple, uh, uh, simple things, and then 
Number two, I think there was zero maps. So what was the symbol? Then was this one, right? So zero maps actually sent every element to zero element. And so what does that mean? That means uh, the kernel of x equal to v, so the kernel of this theta is to v itself, and hence uh, the 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 null nullity nullity is nothing but the dimension, full dimension. So 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 these two are extreme map, right? In one case it is a full kernel is become full dimension of v, another one is uh, the first one is the range is become full dimension, right? And here obviously uh, you can see the range of uh, theta is actually single term zero, and hence rank is zero. So rank of rank of theta equal to zero, and hence again it satisfies the dimension problem, right? Then I get here. So now obviously you can, you can find many of examples and uh, maybe some more example I can give some non-trivial. Now recall, um, um, okay so, so uh, you know that, do you remember this PNF, PNF is that actually sitting inside PF, what was PF, this is polynomial over the field F and this is polynomial so this is what this is. Um, uh, polynomials polynomials uh, over f with degree degree of the polynomial which is less than equal to n and you can easily check that this also forms this subspace of uh, so it is a vector space and substitute of pf and not only that so you check that uh, this will form a basis <coughs> sorry so one basis of this over f is nothing but one x x square and x power n this will forms uh, this basis of PNF over the field F. Okay, this is you can easily check. Okay, so uh, so in particular you can you can ask uh, for particular cases whether you have linear maps or not, right? Uh, obviously, this I said one basis. Uh, there may be this is generally called standard order basis. That okay. There may be different basis also. Okay. So, um, so with this help, so we can ask uh, whether we have some map from say um, all the polynomials with the less than equal to two or uh, maybe real numbers. So let me start with real numbers. So to ECF to uh, P three polynomials of degree less than equal to three. And how to define this map? So, so uh, okay, so. So we take a polynomial P polynomial of X and we send this polynomial to uh, maybe derivative uh, that that formal derivative plus uh, the integral of degree to rate. So um, P of T zero to uh, x. Obviously, you can have um, you can give uh, uh, some constant here. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can put some constant here, some constant there. Accordingly, you can find out the thing. So, in particular, let me just put two here and three here. This is arbitrary, you can put any constant, okay. So, so this is your uh, on you can easily say this is linear map because derivative is also linear map, integral is also linear map, right? Uh, so, this f is linear as linear as both 
pronunciation. And intuition. Are linear, right? So both linear, you can obviously uh, you can check that it's linear. It's not a problem. Uh, now, now question is that uh, what kind of um, what kind of uh, space is this? Like um, uh, whether it has uh, what, what, what is that image? How how the image look like and um, so, so what is the rank? What is the nullity? This you can ask, right? So, so you can take a standard basis. So let A two, so let standard basis of P two. So choose B one. Standard basis of P two. C one. It's x square. Okay. And uh, if this is the standard basis of P two, then um, like E obviously. If you know how the basis element of the image or basis element is enough to know that everything, right? Because any element here, if you know combination of basis element in P2, if you know the what are the images of this, that will give you the uh, basis element of the range, okay? So, or rather, uh, the, that will give the spanning set of them. I should not the basis element. So, so uh, how the range look like then? So, range will be range of it will be of the form um, it will be spanning set of this f of one f of x f of x square right okay uh, because every element of p2 r is in a combination of one x square if you know the images they will span the whole thing right the range now what is what is this? So uh, how, how this look like? So uh, what is f of one? So if you pluck uh, one here, p x equal to one. So there will be vanishes here. This will be zero. This is one. So this will give you a three x first one. So f of one equal to three times x. Uh, f of x. So instead of p x, you put plug in x. So this will give you two x. Right, and this will give you x square by uh, so this is x square by two, so three by x square by two. So what does that mean? That means uh, the derivative will be one. Okay, so this will be three by two into x square plus two. Okay, and then for x square, its derivative is what? 2x into 4x. So this is 4x first one. Okay, so then write down some term. And this one is what? This is x cube by 3. So 3 get cancelled. So x cube. x cube. So the, uh, the range of it will be obtained by these three vectors. Right? Now, once you know these three vectors, uh, these, these are elements inside the P3R. So, the, what does that mean? That means uh, they are the really atmosphere uh, that you can see, right? Now, so I don't know whether this, this are linearly independent or not. You have to check that these vectors are linearly independent or not. And to check this vector are linearly independent or not, what do you need to do? So, you need to check that. Uh, so, so. Okay. So, so how do you check this vector in an independent map? So you check that, uh, suppose you have constant C1, C3, such so that C1 of uh, Cx plus C2 of uh, 3 by 2, x square plus 2, and then C3 of x cube plus 4x. That is still the right? You need to solve for C1, C2, C3. Okay. Yes. And if you want to solve for C1, C2, C3, then what, what happens? So, so you, you, uh, how many x's are there? Now, in, in one equation, you have 3 P1, 
plus uh, here you have 4 into 4 c3 and that will be coefficient of x and for x square you have uh, 3 by 2 c2 x square and then for x cube you have c3 into x cube and then you have 2 c2 that is constant so this is 0 identically what does that mean identically means so so the coefficient this is that that is plus obviously the c2 equal to 0 and which is that means c2 equal to 0 that all you all get obviously similarly uh, c3 equal to 0 and now you have to plug that thing here so from here you have 3c1 plus 4c3 equal to 0 but c3 equal to 0 already so this is by c1 equal to 0 now you see that all c1 is equal to 0 so so this is a linear independent subset right so what does that mean that means it's rank of uh, rank of f which is dimension of length space which is actually 3 And uh, once you know that thing, then you can obviously find out what is the uh, null space. Okay. Okay. So rank is three. So rank by two tells you that the dimension of equals three. So that that nullity equal to zero. Nullity of f equal to zero. Right. Now what does that mean? That I am going to tell you what is the meaning of right of zero. Okay. So, okay. So now um. Uh, let me tell you uh, some applications of this uh, rank nullity theorems. And, uh, okay, so applications. Now, um, so this is obvious uh, that uh, if you have a linear map, so let a from v to w uh, i mean i'm assuming uh, that uh, they, they were same same uh, field okay so so let me write down this the a linear map Okay, uh, then what can say about you? Then uh, this F is injective. Uh, injective means one to one or one to one, whatever. Many people write many things. One to one. Some people only write one to one. Okay. If and only. If and only means. This is in both necessary supporting condition. Okay, if not only uh, this uh, uh, the null space, the kernel, the kernel of f is uh, single time. So what does that mean? That means that is uh, this nullity equal to zero. If and only condition. Okay, and um, how do you prove uh, this kind of theorem? The proof is also not difficult. So you need to give proof from both sides. And now uh, one side, let me first prove it. Uh, what happens if um, f is injective? So let f be an injective map or injection. Whatever. If it be injection, then what happen? What does that mean? That means it's always uh, so. So there cannot be uh, two elements whose image is same, right? That is the meaning of injective. Okay. And now we need to prove that that kernel is a single term. So what does that mean? That means whatever you element you choose, the kernel has to be zero. Uh, so so let uh, you choose an element say belongs to kernel of f we have to prove that this is actually um, zero so what does that mean so that this implies 
and this implies f of t that is 0 right but we already know that 0 is already mapping to 0 0 2 is there right uh, so 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 as f is 1 1 uh, so we have x equal to 0 so what does that mean that means kernel is only single term kernel of f is 0 okay so this is one part of the proof and the second part conversely conversely uh, let uh, let kernel of f is single term I need to prove that f is 1 1 ok so and assume that as a, But I mean, so assume that f of uh, x equal to y for some okay now I need to prove that x equal to y gives you there uh, f of x equal to y gives you x equal to y that is the meaning of 1 1 right but x equal to y means what that means f of x minus f of y that is 0 okay and f is linear, so using linearity, you'll have f of x minus y. This was one of the property of linear maps. Okay, so as f is linear, and that means that x minus y is an element of the kernel because the image of this is equal to 0, so this is an element of kernel of f. And that implies that x minus y must be 0 because kernel is 0, only condition is x equal to y. And that tells you that f is uh, 1 1. Okay, so this is uh, this is the proof. So the next application is also very important, and the next application. Uh, it tells you that uh, so so we assume that uh, two vector spaces B and W uh, and if it's linear map such that uh, this dimension of V to the dimension of W and both are finite actually both are finite okay I mean they are equal so it's finite okay so in this case uh, the following are equivalent the following are equivalent. So we'll say that T F A E the following are equivalent. Okay. What are the following things? So um, number one F is one one F is injective. Number two, f is subjective, and that means on two. And number three is what? Number three tells you that the rank of f is actually the dimension of the rank of f, nothing but the dimension of v. Okay, so this is equivalent. So so for finite vector space, the dimension is equal, injective subjective are same. So you whatever you assume, they are equivalent, right? Now, um, so this requires proof. So how do you prove this thing? So so one in plus two. So let us assume that f is injective. So let f is injective. So what does that mean? That means uh, that is. Um, mm, so that is 
this kernel away from previous applications you can know that you know that kernel away is singleton right so what does that mean that means this nullity is zero nullity okay equal to zero but we, we know that rank nullity theorem tells you that rank of uh, if plus nullity of if this is dimension of v right so what does that mean that means uh, when f is injective then uh, this is the, this person is zero so we'll have rank of f is in full dimension okay now if rank of f is full dimension um, uh, okay, oh, uh, this is one in place three is coming directly. But no problem, we can we can we can prove one in place three also. So this is direct. We can have one in place three and three in plus two like this, and two in plus one doesn't matter. So in any any way you have to prove one full complete circle. So this one in place three is now coming. So I am just getting in place rank of f to dimension f that is easy now second part maybe uh, 3 implies 2 ok 3 implies 2 means what so given that rank of f equal to dimension of v but dimension of v equal to dimension of w that is we know already okay because they are equal if dimension of f is dimension of v w means what the rank of f is actually dimension of w so what does that mean that means the range is so the range of f whose dimension is equal to the dimension of the whole uh, codomain right so that means range of f is nothing but w itself this implies right and if the range is a full space, that means f is on to or subjective. Uh, subjective. This is 3 plus 2, and then 2 plus 1 is also simple. So uh, 2 plus 1 means what? So what is given? Given that uh, f is subjective. So this means that that uh, range of f which you call r t right range space sorry r f that is w subjective okay so what does that mean that means dimension w is the dimension of the range space which is nothing but rank that is equal to rank of f but dimension w is nothing but dimension of f so this is equal to dimension of sorry dimension of v as these two are equal, right? Dimension of W, dimension of V. Now, dimension of W, dimension of V equal, so now you can use again rank nullity theorem that tells you that nullity equal to nullity equal to zero. And that tells you that kernel is singleton, kernel of A is singleton. And that means F is injected. This is obvious, okay. So, or like almost obvious. So, so uh, you can you can prove it, okay. But the interesting fact is that here we assume that the dimension must be finite. So, uh, so obviously you can ask what happens if uh, is not finite. So note that if this dimension of the dimension of w, whatever is not finite. Finite. Then this uh, uh, injectivity and subjectivity equivalence are not equal, right? So injectivity uh, does not imply subjectivity. Okay. 
Okay, so you can have one example. So, the, so what what is the infinite space we have learned? We have learned uh, polynomial like polynomial over f. Okay, you just define the map. Uh, say mm -hmm. the in integral map. So if of p x, we map it to zero to x. T D T. Now obviously this map is injective map because any integral maps are injective map. You can prove it. Okay, injectivity. So this is uh, injective. F is injective, but not subjective. Uh, but not on right. Why? Because uh, the constant polynomial has no preeminent as constant polynomials uh, no Three images. There's no three images. Okay, constant polynomials. Okay, so constant map to integral polynomials, but there is no polynomial which maps to constant. Okay. So this is, this is obvious. You can you can check that because of infinite dimensional, this is happening. Okay. Okay. So there are. Um, uh, there are uh, so this, there are many other applications, but uh, one is one of the most important applications we would like to discuss. That is, um, what happens if we, um, or other other you can say this is theorem or whatever the application. So this is also very important that uh, so that um, if you, if you if you know that one one basis of vector space and another set which is Kind of set where the basis maps, then whether can it can this tells you a universe of linear maps? The answer is yes, and the theorem tells you that. Um, theorem. Uh, so so let. Uh, v over a. F, w over a. B to linear spaces. Okay, and uh, and uh, you assume that your basis, uh, your basis, something like that. V one, V n. Okay, so I am assuming obviously five times now there. Okay, is. Uh, This is for V over F. Okay, and um, uh, and if you, if you fix the image set inside W, uh, does that actually tells you the the uniqueness of uh, linear maps? And the answer is yes. And now, uh, so you know, for any for. Any uh, you choose any set, say W1, W2, Wn, is a subset of W. So, so, so it need not be, uh, this need not be linearly dependent or anything, okay? It can be anything. Uh, so, so, W, there exists, with that condition, there is always exists a linear map. Uh, there exists uh, a linear map. Let me write them properly. A linear map f from v to w such that what is the property such that a for v i then maps to w i for each i for all i i can be one two three and n okay so um.
Okay, so 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 this is the map, and th this is a very important theorem because that that tells you that whenever two linear map exist on the basis, they are actually equal map. Okay, so that that there is corollary that we are going to prove later, but let us give a proof for this. Okay, so 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 the proof is very natural uh, in the sense that uh, how to define the map. So so how to define the map on element? So so let you choose a vector. So let v be a vector uh, and you write down v in terms of uh, basis vector so ci vi i equal to 1 to n and ci is an element of f okay so um so you so the natural way is to define what so that that so we define define the natural way f from V to W by how to define so you define f of V which is actually f of summation ci vi i equal to 1 to n you map these elements to summation ci wi i equal to 1 so this is the this is a definition okay so this dot dot column means a definition so this is my definition. Now if I define by this, first of all I need to prove this is a linear map. So, so this claim uh, f is a linear, and that is very much obvious. Like um, you, you can easily prove if it's linear. Why? Because uh, you, you choose um, uh, some b and uh, maybe so u and v. And so, so let um, how, how do I write down? Okay, so this V is given, so so V summation uh, CI VI I equal to 1 to N, and then you choose uh, some U, which is some uh, DI VI I equal to 1 to N, okay, and you choose some constant alpha. And you remember, in to prove linearity is equal to prove that f of um, alpha into v plus u has to be f of alpha, al uh, alpha times f of v plus f of u, right? Now, what is this element? So, this element is f of uh, alpha v, alpha v is nothing but some sun alpha ci vi i equal to 1 to n and then this is summation di vi right i equal to 1 to n but uh, wh what is this element so this element is f of you take the sum together alpha ci plus vi and then vi i equal to 1 to n right now by definition the image of this will be f of uh, sorry it's not f of summation alpha ci plus di of wi i equal to 1 to n but again you just break split into this and that will give you summation uh, ci wi i equal to 1 to n plus di wi right now see this is the image of f and uh, image of f and uh, image of v under f so this is alpha f of v and this is image of u under f that gives you that f is linear right so if it's linear it's simple proof now uh, what was the question question was that uh, this should map uh, every vi again so again if what is the image of vi's so so in terms of vi means what so so so, so you write down vi in terms of vi means what the only the ith coordinate is uh, contains one other than everything is zero and hence this will be w i right and that is for our uh, so this actually maps with this basis vector di and w i that is obvious okay the question is that whether this map be unique or not okay 
Uh, so so I, I, I must write down in the definition there exists a unique this is a symbol for unique you must say okay so unique uh, there exists unique this is the meaning that the name of unique okay so so um, that we need to say that this is there should be a unique map now how to show this map is unique so what does that mean? That means if we assume that there will be one more map, then done, right? So let so uh, now so this F is unique actually. Now uh, let uh, you have another map, say G. Okay, from B to W, B A linear map. Such that what happened? G of this VI at WI. Then I need to prove that uh, this obviously for all i equal to 1 to n. Okay. I need to prove that uh, they are equal, right? So, how to prove they are equal? So, you, you just define G of x um, and what, what, what is x? So, G of x equal to. Uh, uh, okay, so, so rather let me write down V that is easier for V. So I already assume what is V. So G of V, what? Uh, so this is, you know, you recall V was summation CI, VI, I equal to 1 to N. And because G is linear, so we will have this is by definition of linearity. And the property of linearity, this is nothing but G of VI. Is, I equal to 1 to n, but g of v i equal to w i, so it will give you some sign c i w i i equal to 1 to n, but some c i w i is nothing but image of v under f, so 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 what the, the, that means this is for all v belongs to v, this is happening, and that means that g is identically equal to f, so then f is equal, uh, f is a uh, um, unique map, unique linear map which actually sends this element to that particular element and wi. Okay, now what will be the natural corollary? The natural corollary is that if you have um, two, two maps which actually equal on the image are equal on uh, the basis element, okay, and then done, they are equal. So, what will be the corollary? So, the natural corollary of this theorem. Um, so let uh, f1 and G, f2 from uh, two linear maps from u to b be two linear maps. Okay, then a linear maps such that not then. Okay, I must. Was that uh, what happened that um, says that uh, if one if two equals on a basis element on a basis that means the image of the is same on that basis okay uh, then they are equal, then they are identically equal, then if one is equal to f2. Identically equal means they have the same map, okay. You can only say if one equal to f2 also, you can also write down if one equal to f2, no problem. Okay, and that is obvious because the previous theorem tells you that uh, if you define f1, that will be unique map, right? So if they are equal on basis, they are equal, unique map, right? So this, this is uh, one other, another nice theorems involving, I mean, our linear algebra things. Now maybe uh, maybe today I am going to discuss one small uh, idea. So the main part is already covered. So one small idea I just want to discuss, and that is called um, direction. So what is the direction of things? So let me just recall this here. So that is some subspaces. 
this thing need to define so so uh, um, so um, okay I, I'm assuming they have the find dimensional for infinite dimensional also you can do it but let, let us first think this is for find dimensional okay should have uh, w1 and w2 they are uh, maybe this is my symbol this means subspace so they are the subspaces of v and v is the dimension length find dimensional okay so so uh, then then we define direct sum of w1 w2 okay so what is that um, okay so um, okay so there are two ways to be defined so um, one can say that uh, the, the intersection is um, so one way you define that the intersection is actually uh, yeah, they're empty they, they don't have anything in the intersection this is one way defining okay and uh, maybe, maybe this is this is the best way of defining so let me just define by that so what does that mean that means uh, w1 direct sum w2 so uh, how do we write down so so this is collection all vector of the form small w1 plus w2 so the small w1 is inside capital w1 and small w2 inside capital w2 okay now also i need to add this intersection this uh, trivial means only zero vector is there okay then obviously you can prove that uh, this is also subspace of so that whole space okay and um, uh, and the question is that they may be equal to the full space also so in this case if if this is uh, this then we say that the w1 and w2 are direct sum end okay we say that w1 and w2 are direct sum end and then or v is the direction of w w2 whatever maybe like the let me write down that so we will say v is the direction of w and w2 Sum of W and W two. Okay. So this is symbol. I uh, this is important idea. I can easily uh, this required this later half in for this kind of idea, and one can easily check that uh, if when this dimension is equal actually that you can check. And uh, if we have um, dimension of V is exactly sum of dimension of W and W two, okay. So that that will tell you that they are actually direct sum for finite for finite vector space. It's not true for infinite vector space obviously. Okay. And there are obviously you can you can prove many many things. So uh, you kind of adding um, from a basis of V one W and W two, you can make find out the basis of W one. So this is homework. So, for example, um, okay. So, so, so if this is direct sum, and I'm assuming find dimensional. So that means you can think that they are sitting inside this, right? Uh, so, so, so maybe the, this is say n one dimension dimension is n two, and this dimension is n, which is n one plus n two. Then uh, the first n1 vectors may be non zero for w1 and zero for w2. So, for example, and the basis may be of this form okay, so v1 to n1 and 0, 0, 0. Okay, I mean, oh, oh, I must know what I'm saying. I'm saying, uh, V1, Vn is the basis and those elements are of this form. So what does that mean? That means 
so v1 vn1 is the basis of w1 okay and how this look, element look like so v uh, v i's are uh, this first first n1 n is things so um, So, so you can you can think that the first n one places can be anything, and then zero 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 zero. Similarly, if v two is the basis of uh, something e one e two e n two, and then you can think that uh, this first last uh, the same to many are uh, things as first are all zero zero zero, and when you add, then you have arbitrary basis of uh, v and v2. So this collection it gives you arbitrary basis of v and v2. Okay, by that way you can you can find out things. Okay, so this is one one uh, important source place that we require in the data app. So that's why I'm telling you. Okay, maybe I'll stop here and uh, next day we will learn another important idea. Uh, very important how you can represent for finding vector space this linear map in terms of matrices. Okay, that we're going to learn in next lecture.